Hey there, and welcome to the Confident Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Brooks. Join me as I sit down and chat with co-hosts, friends, and carefully curated guests and talk about all the things that empower you to become your best and most confident self. So let's get started. Hey there, and welcome back to another episode of the Confident Woman Podcast. So today, I'm curious to know, do you ever feel like no matter what you do, it's never enough? Like you could be working your butt off at the gym and you're just wondering why you haven't lost that weight or you have just started a business and you're wondering why it hasn't come to the fruition and you're wondering why things just aren't working out the way it was supposed to be. Well, no matter what it is that you're trying to do or trying to achieve, you can really just at the end of the day feel like it's never enough because that's where we're putting our focus. And this is something that I'm literally in the season, right? So as we hear these things, and sometimes we're like, logically, we know this, like, yeah, there's going to be moments where you feel like it's not enough. And yeah, there's going to be moments of frustration, you just want to throw in the towel and just say, you know, screw it, let's go back to the way things were, because at least it was easier, at least it was comfortable, at least we knew what to expect, which is, I guess, at that point, the same results you're getting, right? Because you're not getting the results in a positive way that feels like you're making any forward progress. So it becomes this futile effort like, well, if that, then this and vice versa. So this is something that in this season that I'm in, and I think it's a a great example or even an analogy that we can pull, especially if we start looking at it from, you know, progress, a, a point of progress. And I think it, a pretty safe example we can use is in our health and wellness and fitness journeys and whether we start looking at it from that perspective of possibly dieting, right? We put in all these days of of eating clean or whatever you want to call it, and you hadn't lost the weight or hadn't lost as much as you had hoped. And so we'll just kind of use that as an example here because what I'm finding even in the season is that I have so many facets in areas of my life that I'm simultaneously working on same time. Now, I know this might be weird because it's like, how do you multitask personal growth and development? Well, I don't know. I'm just trying to figure it out, right? This is just what works for me. It's kind of like multi tabs on my browser. But what I'm doing is that I'm sprinkling in these self improvement techniques that are working for me. And the, what I mean by that is just making conscious decisions and choices that are aiding in improving the overall quality of my life and in all these different areas. So what I find though is because it's so hard, first of all, it's it's so hard to go into one area of your life and just give it 100%. Because if you're 100%ing it, that means the other areas of your life are, haven't even gotten any percentage of your time or energy. So those things will be falling to the wayside. They'll obviously be neglected. And they'll start showing up in your areas of your life. And you're like, oh my gosh, why does life suck over here? Well, that's why for me, this this system, this technique works. And I'm kind of dabbling, you know, like, you know, 10, let's just say there's 10 areas, 10% in each area. And I'm adding up to the 100% that I can give each day. So why I share that is because it, it's so important to recognize that the areas that we're working on to improve we need to be mindful and always keep that open, open concept that we won't ever arrive. We'll never be at the end goal. And when the end goal does happen, let's just assume you have met that end goal, there will always be something left for more because that's the disadvantage here of focusing on the expected outcome. And then finding out that when you've arrived, it's not what you thought it would be. So that ideal creates just this big disconnect and you get sucked into this gap. And in this gap is where all that negative judgment and criticism and self-loathing and all that, all the down negative stuff that we try to outrun, numb and escape from. So in reality, it's kind of like, okay, why are we stuck there? Right. But. We do this not intentionally. We do this because we're so focused on this vision. Like this is the thing that we're chasing. This is the thing that we're working our butts off for. This is the vision we, you know, think that we deserve or are 
entitled to or whatever, whatever that excuse or reason that you tell yourself is. So I'm listening on audiobook, this book called The Gap and the Gain, and that's by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy. And this has been such an incredible book that oddly enough, when we talk about like timing and alignment, and it just, it's literally the perfect timing because a few of our ladies in our community, oddly enough, all chimed in randomly and said, hey, I'm reading this book. And I'm like, me too. And the next person said, me too. And the next person, me too. So we've come to find out that so many women in our community are actually reading this book. But to go back to the book and how this relates is when we're so focused on that gap, we can't see the gains in our progress. And if we're pulling that example from a diet perspective, right? We're, we've been on this diet. We haven't lost the weight. And we come back to that and say, well, if we're focused on how much further we have to go, we're not cheering ourselves on for the successes that we've already achieved. And whatever example you want to pull from your own personal life, I'll just share this one, is as even from being in the former bodybuilding fitness space, this is why it's very relatable with health and fitness because everyone has been on that part. You focus on the long term. I'm nowhere near the goal. I have so much farther to go. I don't know if I could keep doing this. And the gap is what's swallowing us up whole. So if we start focusing on our starting point of the day that we chose to set out to do X, Y, and Z, now we reverse our progress. We start measuring our progress from today. So instead of looking at how much further we have to go, because again, we don't know, first of all, if what the end date is, unless say you've set an end date for your goal and that end date does happen and you don't meet your goal or you did meet your goal and you're just like, this is it and disappointment sets in and you wonder why there's just emptiness, this void. And you're wondering how you can fill that because that void of not feeling enough, that void of not achieving, that void of of unfulfillment and lack thereof will keep you chasing the next thing and on to the next thing without ever stopping to really appreciate and acknowledge the progress you have made to even get to where you're at today. So this book, like I said, it's just very timely. It's super easy to read. And I think as as I'm nearing the end of the book, I've realized so many different f- facets of my life and the books that I've read and just the timing and the season that I'm in, it feels so like, uh, what is this, uh, the serendipity or something like that, where everything just sinks and it's all in alignment. So prior to reading The Gap and the Gain, I had just finished up again, The Power of Now. And The Power of Now brought up the perspective of being in the present moment, the here and now. And then my other book, so it's funny, as I'm sharing this again, real time. These are all the pieces that I'm connecting, but also the lessons and the insights and how things that life, we call it life, universe, whatever you want to call it. I call it God. God gives me life. And this is what I'm given. And so when you're in this present moment, you actually see how life is working for you. And in the present moment, you can also recognize the progress and the day to day of the successes and things that you're doing that will add up over time so you don't get stuck in the gap. And then the other book is my own book, Chasing Perfection. Oddly enough, I mean, I go back to my own book. And I don't say it just because it's that good and you must read it. But the lessons in there are so still current and relevant. The stories that I share in there are also reminders for myself. And so I can measure my progress from the woman who I was and the woman I became and then the woman I'm becoming. And so all of these books, all three of these books in these in this past, I think about a month is I, I read these three books again. And 
how each one of them brings forth a new meaning and compounding over that time. So in my book, for example, it was about a lot of it in the season that I'm reading in this chapter is letting go and surrender. And I'm revisiting those chapters. I'm going through the lessons that I share in my book. I'm going through the stories. And I can now measure myself from then to now. And then in this now, pulling from that book as well, The Power of Now, that now is where I get to make and create this future version of me, which then becomes the vision, the destination, this goal. And now we get to focus day to day by learning from the gap versus the gap in the gain is that I get to compare yesterday versus today. And that's where I get to measure my progress. So my, my through line is letting go and surrendering from chasing perfection to becoming fully present in the power of now book by Eckhart Tolle and then appreciating the gains that I have now progressed and not get swallowed into the gap, which becomes that destruction area. It's the doom and gloom. It's where all things go to die. It's that great divide, that big dark hole that we can get sucked into if we are not careful. So just sharing some of those pretty cool like through lines and these ahas and the synchronicities and I guess just life and I'm really experiencing life and it's this cool season that I'm in. You know, as things start to be on the up, I'm really, really just so appreciative of those moments and focusing on being fully present in the here and now has allowed me to really bask in the day to day. And it's so weird and it's so hard at times too because I have never been this slow in my life. Life has never been this speed. And I'm finding myself really digging this slower version of me, this slowing down, this mindfulness, this being more present, being, you know, new age, right? Like you're just a different, you're, you're wise with maturity. And as you grow older and I'm really digging this season. So it's pretty cool, but I would love to hear from you guys because if you've read any of those books or if you're finding yourself in the season where it's like, I'm the opposite, like I'm not digging anything, right? I'm giving you hope here because listen, I had a spell for the darkest season for like a long ass time and it's been, I'm just grateful for these lessons. In a previous episode, we talked about the gains that we can get from our lessons, the gains now that we start shifting our focus on for these books that I'm reading to, you know, me sharing on this podcast to connecting with so many of you. It's like you get to be an eyewitness to life unfolding. And I don't know about you, but that's pretty damn cool. So again, let me hear from you. I love hearing how each one of these episodes resonate with you. Some of the takeaways, again, you guys give me the content. You guys are encouraging me to create more of this. So keep it up. And if this is something that you, again, are just really jamming to and want to hear more about, come into the Confident Woman Community Group. We definitely have these conversations. If you're looking for more support, come into the Confident Woman Impact Accelerator Program. And we have some incredible offers that are happening here that are really there to support you. Because again, this is real time. I'm building this, I'm growing this, and you guys, everyone's giving me the content and idea. So without you guys, I wouldn't be here. The confident woman wouldn't be here. So again, thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of our incredible community. And thank you for just giving me the courage and confidence to keep showing up and keep sharing these episodes with you because obviously they're resonating. You guys have been an incredible community and support for me to keep going. So thank you again, and I look forward to connecting with you as we always do. So until next time, take care. Hey there, thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Confident Woman Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did, please be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Thanks again for listening. 